So at midnight, they missed their opportunity. What I thought was really interesting, this is, gonna, this is hard on you. If, you. if you don't understand, this is the part of God that nobody thinks about. Them girls said no. Now, do you realize they told somebody no who wasn't going to get in? <sighs> Most of us are so dysfunctional, we won't get to go either. We'll give them what we got. Mess up our future. No's an answer. No's an answer. The Kairos moment was there. The bride, nobody knew when the bridegroom was coming. It said he tarried. You don't know when your opportunity's coming. You can't get ready just enough because you don't know when that is. So how can you know you got enough? How can you know you're committed enough if you don't know when it's going to happen? It's a, see, you're, oh, listen, it's not a moment that you get ready for. It's a lifestyle that qualifies you. It's how you live every day. They, them girls lived that way before they got to go to that bride thing. It's a lifestyle. They said no. Uh-oh. There's a finality to your decision, which nobody in this world nowadays thinks there is one because we keep postponing them. There's a finality to your decision. The door was shut on them five other virgins. God closed the ark door himself in Noah's day. If you were in charge, you'd think you could time it. But if you're not in charge, you have to learn to live it. Please forgive me, don't throw your shoes, but some of you need a boss until you learn this lesson. And bosses you hate, ask God why you got them. There might be something underneath the surface that God is trying to teach you about taking orders and conforming and fitting to what you're supposed to do. Now we're going to touch that too. I'm excited about touching that part. So he said, watch therefore. Now, I, I'm just going to give you one more because I like driving the nail in real, real deep. Joseph was ready when they called him. Joseph was ready when his time came. What's funny, in the natural, he was dirty in the prison. They had to scrub him down and put some clothes on him before he could go before the king, but he was ready. See, don't worry about what you don't have. My God, are you lined up? Properly, or your, is your heart right with God that you just know you got it coming? Joseph was ready because, listen, he did not adapt to the culture on his inside. He knew he wasn't in charge, but he maintained his personal integrity. Romans 12, 2 says, we'll go ahead and let you read it up there. The devil's a liar. Don't believe anything he says. Okay. Romans 12, 2. Okay, here we go. See, you can be in the world, but it says be not conformed to this world. That means don't accept same-sex marriage. I didn't say you're in charge of whether they do it or not, but in your heart. Don't call good evil and evil good so you can get along. Don't say nothing but something, but don't do that. Don't start lying to yourself to fit. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is, what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, can you, can you live in a society? This is a big deal. See, it's your difference that's going to make you successful. The, the, the time you start to adapt, you're losing your opportunity. Because it's your difference that's going to be needed. If you're just like everybody else, no offense, you're common and you're not needed. You're just one of the sheep, one of the cattle. You're just one of the employees. If you can live quietly and wait for your opportunity for God to reveal something to that people.
You don't get ready, you live ready. Joseph was highly favored like Daniel, but they still had trouble. See, we're looking for this favor where we don't have any enemies or anything. I don't know that place either. Where, where everybody likes you and it's, you know, you hear wonderful, warm, fuzzy feeling. Everybody makes you feel good. There isn't that place. God inserts you in the midst of something. And then he allows a crisis so you could be the answer. We've got to talk about that in a little bit, the attitude on that. Because, see, we think we're going to come like a Savior. And Daniel said, I don't know anything, but God in heaven does. See, you're not the answer. <laughs> if, you, if you think you're the answer, you're going to be arrogant and they're not going to want to talk to you anyway. But if you know you're not the answer and God is, you're ready. You're just going to come in under and, say, and they're going to give you a compliment and you're going to say, that's an inaccurate statement. I don't, that's not how this works. God is the one that's going to reveal your dream. It was his difference that made him a success. Obviously, you know you're an original. We all talk about that. With your own set of gifts that God gave you. Nothing to be worse if we were all the same. You know that. Be terrible. No one is like you. But here's a question for you. Can you honor another culture and not defile yourself? Can you go to work where everybody sleeps with everybody, half the people do drugs, half the married people flirt, half the other ones lie, some of them sell drugs, some of them do all, it doesn't matter what they do. Can you get in there and maintain your integrity and not become critical and have an arrogant attitude, but wait for the time that God is going to allow you to speak? Instead of going there and say, they're all no good on why I got me a job there. God strategically placed you there. So you could learn something and you could do something. Instead of complaining everybody's not right, make sure you're right. <laughs> You'll be ready for your opportunity to change the atmosphere. Can God place you for a strategic time and not lose you in the wait? Can God put you in an environment like Nebuchadnezzar who goes around killing people because they don't say the right thing and he does what he wants and you survive and not become part of it but still maintain your integrity on the inside and smile and get favor? but not compromise who you are. That's strength. That's real strength. That's biblical strength. That's the kind that creates favor. That's why Daniel had favor and Joseph had favor, because they could both do that. If you're going to whine and complain and say everything's no good, you will not have favor. You'll have a job. A job's not enough for me. I've got to have a purpose and a cause. I cannot settle for a job. Never could. Had to have a reason. You understand? It couldn't have been money. And I like to make money. That's not what I'm, I like to make money. I'm an entrepreneur. I like to start business, make lots of money. I don't care how that sounds. It doesn't worry me. I like doing it. But that can't be the only thing. I have to have a reason to do it or a cause. God puts you in a place for a purpose and he's got to wait till you get groomed. And, and when you're groomed, the opportunity's right and somebody will have a dream. Somebody will have a problem. Amen. This, this, what's tough about this, oh, please hear me. This is only learned in what seems like captivity where you're not in charge. That lesson is only learned where you're not in charge. Now you know something, don't you? Instead of trying to be in charge, you've got to admit that you're not in charge in order to learn what you need to learn. If you fight it and you're always trying to fix it, you're not going to learn what you need to learn. And these are great men that weren't in charge. You think they, they were in charge eventually, buddy. Both of them, right up to the top of authority, second in command. Daniel survived a military coup, killed the king, and left Daniel there. 
I never heard of such a thing. They wipe out a whole leadership when they take over a country. Not Daniel. He survived a complete overthrow and still kept his job. If God gives you the job, good luck him trying to move you out. The virgins, Daniel and Joseph, all had one thing in common. They were not in charge. They just had to be ready. They had to be ready. That's what they had. That's what made them successful. They were ready. They had to be ready. Oh, I'm excited. I'm ready. I want to be ready. I'm ready. I'm re I want to be ready. I want to be ready. So Daniel was in the right place at the right time. Nebuchadnezzar has a dream from God. Now this is how you'll know it's God. Since God gave him the dream, it, would, it has to take God to interpret it. None of them secular folk could, it, because it's hidden. God hides it so only his people can get it. Ah, I get so excited, I can't. Think about it, God hides it so the right Your wealth is hidden so you can find it. Your promises are hidden so the devil can't get to them. So God camouflages them in a dream, in a vision, in a situation where you're only a Holy Ghost filled born again believer could find it. My God, what a safekeeping. A few hand claps. Nice. Listen, you know how you stay in tune, right? You don't eat too much. You don't talk too much. You don't think you know too much. You pray. And you pray in the Spirit. If you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, that's one of your best things you can do. Go rabba shada rabba kayaraha. The Bible said, pray in the Spirit, build up yourself on your most holy faith. The Bible said in Acts 1, you know, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I didn't write it, you've got to read it. If it's not digestible, go back and read it again and tell me where God quit and decided being baptized in the Holy Ghost. He didn't want it no more because, see, I've got to see it in writing. I've got to see it in the Word. It has to say, you know, I'm so thick or don't understand. I need to say, and this ended here. Because that's the way God talks to me, plain through the word. If it doesn't say it, then it still sticks. You know, when you go for counseling, they always tell you, well, what's the last thing God said to you? And then they tell you, well, just do that till he says something else. You always do what God says the first time until he tells you to do something else. Nebuchadnezzar has a dream and all the secular people can't solve it. Now listen, Daniel lived in the secular people just like Joseph did. This environment where everybody thinks that, you know, all the Christians are there and we're all living a, in a monastery and stuff, I don't, that one don't exist either. Your gift is going to be mixed in with other crazy demonic gifts. But yours has to stand out and the time comes. None of those astrologers could solve the problem because God hid it from them by giving Nebuchadnezzar a dream that only the man of God could interpret. That's why the Bible says your gift will make room for you. Daniel gets wind that he's going to die. Isn't that interesting? You'd think following God that wouldn't happen to him. But he, God, Nebuchadnezzar's so tough, he's just going to kill them all. Kill them all. That's what, that's, that was Nebuchadnezzar's motto. Just kill them all. He's always wanting to kill somebody. He's going to kill Daniel and the others. Daniel gets wind of it, and he asks for favor. He says, wait a minute. Let me, let me give me some time. Because, see, he didn't know about it. And Daniel had a way with words in the NIV. Listen to the, the NIV in, in Daniel 12, 14. It says that he spoke with wisdom and tact. He spoke to the commander. See, I'm really big on words and communication. I think we nix our future all the time because we never we learn how to cook. We learn how to fix things. But it's like we take talking for granted because we can move our mouth. And I think communication is a learned skill 
and articulation is a skill and you should give just as much time to learning to talk to people as you do anything else in this world. Because without it, you will, you will not get things done. And this was a crucial situation. And Daniel knew how to talk to people in leadership. Even when he was captive, he could be himself and be honoring. You know, I was thinking this week that vic there, there is no relationship between being a victim and using your faith. You can't be a victim and have faith. They don't mix because when you've got faith, you're not a victim. You get out. If you see through the eyes of a victim, your words will be different than somebody who sees possibility. Daniel, here he is. He's taken captive. He's, he obeys God. The nation's bad. The king's bad. He goes into captivity. They take him away from his country. They make him do things, and he's still not a victim. Hallelujah. What a great guy. He's still not a victim. He just got pulled out of everything he ever had, but he's not a victim yet. Bless God. He's not a victim. Got favor. You'd, if anybody would be a victim, you'd think he, he might have a girlfriend they took him away from. Who knows? He might have took her. Because that's what they do when they take over. You know, you usually kill the men, take the women, right? And the kids. They did take the kids, so I imagine they killed the men. Point is, he still didn't see himself as a victim. He saw himself as a man who knew God. So with wisdom and tact, he spoke. So Daniel asks for more time. He instructs his friends to go pray to God and get some mercy, man, because we're in trouble. And God gives him the wisdom. It's wonderful. God gives him the wisdom. And when Nebuchadnezzar says, can you do this? He says, no. Can you interpret a dream? No. He made a line of demarcation between him and God and wanted Nebuchadnezzar to see it. My God, what a great picture of God. In other words, I don't know. I don't know, but he does. And that's, who we're going to, that's where I got this from him. I don't take no credit. I don't think I know anything. I'm not smarter than any astrologer you got. But there's a God in heaven that reveals. That's when you're getting there. Jesus said, I only do what the Father tells me to do. When you can defer the credit and actually mean it and not pretend to be humble. Oh my. There's such power in real transfer of the credit. It's a great life. You're free to be yourself, by the way. You're not acting. You can be who you are and enjoy it. <laughs> because you know God is the one that's going to do it. And God's the one going to help you. And you can be yourself. Instead of be religious and pious and look good. Uh, uh, we'll just read it. If you could pull up Daniel 2, probably verse 40 or 45, somewhere in there, because I want to touch a few things. The point was, he revealed to me, this is, this is Daniel's attitude. Daniel tells Nebuchadnezzar, he says, God wants to tell you something, Nebuchadnezzar. It's not about me. Yes. It's not about me, it's about you. God wants to tell you, Nebuchadnezzar, what he's going to do in the future. See, if you're trying to get credit, you'll come in with the wrong attitude. But it, he was serving Nebuchadnezzar. God was still using protocol. He was serving Nebuchadnezzar, even though he was a tyrant half the time. And he gets a man of God to come in with humility and define to Nebuchadnezzar what's going to happen. Can God use you like that? Verse 45. Uh, hold on. We'll start with 43. I'm sorry, guys. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with clay, this is an end time, this is about the empires. That's, we're not teaching eschatology or we would touch that, but we're not. I'm not that good at it anyway. You probably ought to listen to somebody who studies it. Besides, them eschatology preachers change as they go sometimes, so I'm not sure anybody's got it exactly down, okay? The iron mixed with clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another as iron not mixed with clay. And the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up his kingdom, set up a kingdom, 
which shall never be destroyed. In other words, God's going to come and establish his kingdom here someday. I'm looking forward to it, to be honest with you. God's the best leader I know. That sounds so corny to say that, but he's so squared away and so fair and just. All the stuff that you don't like will be fixed that isn't right. Now, he'll step on our toes because he's going to run his kingdom. He rules it with a rod of iron. Oh, my. See, Revelation says when he comes, he came like a lamb. When he comes back, he's coming with order and authority and power. It's going to be good, but I hope you, I hope you can fit in there. <laughs> Amen. He should be left to the people, uh, but it shall break to pieces and continue, consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest the stone which is cut out of the mountain without hands and broke to pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to thee, king, to the king, what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain and the interpretation is sure. God gave Daniel the interpretation so the king would understand that he was the only one that ever in existence that had absolute power. There has never been any kingdom since like Nebuchadnezzar who totally dominated as dictator. There's been little dictators, but Nebuchadnezzar had complete dominion. He was the head of gold and God was creating a picture of what was going to come after him and he needed Daniel to do that. Now, this is how high the stakes are around Nebuchadnezzar. His astrologer said, tell me the dream and I'll tell you the interpretation. He says, no, you tell me what I dreamed and then you give me the interpretation or I'll kill you. <laughs> Could you imagine what he was really like? Tell me my dream and then if you don't do that, I'll kill you. High stakes. But that's how God hid it for Daniel to interpret. See, it's all right to come up against what looks impossible. When God wants to give you an opportunity, it always looks impossible. And if we shrink back from impossibility, we shrink back from our opportunities. I'm not telling you run around and do everything that's impossible, but make sure you're ready for the one thing. Make sure you're ready for the one thing, your opportunity. Your, your opportunity for business, your opportunity to do something for God, your opportunity to find the right mate, your opportunity to find the right something. Make sure you live ready. Clean up yourself if you're looking for somebody. Clean your car if you want a new one. Does this make sense? Prepare like you're going to go get a job. I always revert back to the car business. Here we go. You greeted everybody like they was going to buy something. If you went out there with that defeatist attitude, you'd sell about three and a half cars a month on a good month if you're lucky, and you'd be fired in two, two months. <laughs> you had to go out there and face all that rejection and smile no matter how it looked and say, hi, how are you? My name's Joe. What can I do for you? And it didn't matter how bad they treated you. It didn't matter if they opened up with all you car sales with fees. You probably can't do nothing for me. How much you want for that ozone bill? Because that's what they do. <laughs> it sounds terrible. <laughs> they used to talk. That's terrible, but that's what people do. Now, you've got to be willing to think, I'm going to succeed anyhow. It doesn't really matter. Because you know what you're supposed to do. You're ready. You're always ready. Jesus said, watch, for you know not when. He's coming. Be ready. Are you ready today? Are you ready for an opportunity to come your way? Are you ready for the return of Jesus? Are you ready for him to step you into your destiny because you have lived prepared for your golden opportunity to do something for God? Let's stand to our feet, please. Father, we are so grateful this morning. We are just grateful today that wherever you put us, even if we're training in Babylon, you're getting us ready for our opportunity. That just like Moses was sent to Egypt to be trained, and Joseph was in captivity to be trained, 
and Daniel was trained in captivity. Help us not mistake our prison as our purpose. Thank you that like Esther, we were born for such a time as this and that we don't miss our opportunity. That we seize the moment. Mm, Seize the moment. I'll be ready when my day comes. Oh, what if Jesus would have missed the cross? Where would we be today? If Mary would have missed her opportunity, but she said, be it unto me according to thy word. Oh, there's something for you to do from God, but you have to go the right way and be ready you cannot strive to obtain it you just gotta be ready when your time comes I give him praise we must live prepared ready for the day of his return oh Jesus We look forward to your government. We look forward to your order, God. We look forward to you putting away evil forever. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Oh God, like it is in heaven. Father, I pray this morning over all of us that we will learn to walk in step with the Holy Ghost, that we will not in the natural think we know, we will obey God and be ready in the Spirit, and we will not miss our opportunity, God. Thank you that you'll send us a Mordecai if you have to. You'll give us favor with the gatekeeper, the jail man, God, and he'll take care of us. If somebody is set to execute us, you'll give us the right words, Lord that'll save our life because you will deliver us from all destruction. We give you praise and honor.